Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, the 5th of May. Hopefully, this finds you all really well. Um, yes, and please, I just want to continue to say that if you are moving around at the moment, whether it's you are an essential worker, firstly, we thank you for being on the front lines. We thank you for the healthcare workers. Um, and if you are one of those who's moving back to work, you really just pray that you would use wisdom, the wisdom that we've been speaking about as well, as you move backwards and forwards. And as well, just please be safe on the roads with more and more people starting to use the roads right now. So going back, and so welcome to all of those that have been with us for a while. You'll know that we have been on a journey through the book of James. And we've started winding down, and when I say winding down, I purely mean that we're coming to the last chapter in the book of James. Looking at James, we've seen James has given us some really, really practical nuggets of truth and really practical ideas in terms of how to, to live our lives, how to, to build character, and how to just live this godly lifestyle that we're called to live. And, and you'd almost kind of expect that as we move into chapter 5, that maybe James starts changing tune and winding down and saying goodbye in this letter. But James continues with that mindset. James continues with just giving us practical advice on how to live this godly life. And, he, and he, this morning we're picking up on a topic that may seem quite sensitive. I think a lot of times it is very sensitive in many of the places that we're in and at. Um, but when we look at it, I think he's very, very wise in what he says. And so this morning, let's just read it together, then pick up a couple of thoughts from that. So we're going to be reading from James chapter 5, verse 1 to about 7. So let's read together this morning. Look here, you rich people. There you go, you see, speaking about money. Look here, you rich people. Weep and groan with anguish because of all the terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away. And your fine clothes are moth-eaten rags. Your gold and silver have become worthless. The very wealth you were counting on will eat away your flesh like fire. The treasure you have accumulated will stand as evidence against you on the day of judgment. For listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay. The wages you held back cry out against you. Cries from those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the Lord of heaven's armies. You have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourself for the day of slaughter. You have condemned the killing innocent people who do not resist you. Yo, quite a quite a way to kind of start easing as we finish off this time that we have in James. And so at first glance, you'll kind of think that, that James is, is kind of saying that, that the rich are worthless. And please, I'm not saying that at all. And I don't believe James is saying that at all. I don't believe he's saying that, that being wealthy is a worthless endeavor. What I do believe James is saying and telling us that the riches, being rich, um, pursuing that, pursuing money, pursuing financial gain um, is a worthless endeavor. And, and he continues to go and say the things that the rich hold on to, the things that the rich hold dear, um, rot away. And this is not the first time we see this in the scriptures. It's not the first time we see this in the New Testament where we read as well that um, we need to store up treasures in heaven, not treasures here on earth, which we know will just rust and rot away. And so what is James kind of getting at here? And I believe he's gone to the point where he's not saying that money is a bad thing. Um, you know, let's just look at that topic, money, for a moment quickly. Um, and so we, we so often kind of go, money is the evil thing. But let's be honest and think about it, that, that we all need money to kind of survive. We need financial um, means to, to survive. Think about Christian leaders. Christian leaders, um, and yes, we can debate this topic whether some guys live more than how they should over their means or over what they expect they should be living, but they still need some sort, they need money to, to survive, they need money to feed their families, they need money to do what they're doing. Um, Christian organizations need money to be able to do what they are doing. NPOs need money to be able to do what they are doing. Churches need money to do what they do effectively. And please, I'm not saying, and I don't believe James is saying here for one moment, that money is the problem. What I do believe he's saying is that the love of money 
is the problem. It's that love of money when all we're doing is focusing on, on getting more and getting more and getting more. We, we're starting to build up these storehouses of just money. That becomes the problem. And and he goes on to even just saying that it's so worthless, but you get guys that, that actually they long for it so much that they cheat people out of it. They cheat people out of a fair day's wage just so that they can have more in their bank account. And so that kind of got me thinking quite a bit about an old illustration that, you know, I heard quite a while ago. And it goes along the lines of, you know, you, you, when you climb your, your life, there's this ladder that you've got to climb. And, and every rung is kind of, you know, like you, you're preparing yourself for the next step. So pretty much like, you know, in school, from you go from grade one to grade two, you've got to pass all your stuff and then you move up a notch in your ladder. You move up a rung in the ladder. And the same as this way with your ladder, um, you know, you, you're going and you're, you're decorating your ladder as you're going along and, you, and you're putting upgrades in your ladder as you get higher and get better off in life and all that kind of stuff. And then you get to a point where you realize, hey, but my ladder doesn't reach all the way to the top. Let me steal somebody else's ladder and put it on my ladder and you continue. Or, or let me use somebody else's ladder as the base and let me use somebody else as the base for my ladder to, to get myself higher kind of referring to to treating others badly and stepping on other people's backs just to get ahead in life and then you get all the way to the end where you get to the top of your ladder kind of representing the end of your life and you realize that your ladder has been leaning against the wrong building all the time and so kind of thinking about that thought is realizing what are we storing up here on earth are we storing up of these earthly treasures that when we read are just going to simply get rotten away and eaten away. Luxury clothes, branded clothes um, that are just going to be moth-eaten rags. And, and, and when you think about that moth-eaten rags, branded clothes and becoming moth-eaten rags that we strive the whole lives to, to look good and to all this stuff and it's going to be nothing more than a moth-eaten rag. And so the, the challenge really is this morning is to, to, to live that kind of lifestyle, to have that kind of character where, where you are, yes, you're dependent on God, but, but money is not what drives you. Money is not what, what makes you get up in the morning going, I need to do this so I can get more. Because when you realize that's living this lifestyle, that God is not in the center of it. And, and you're probably sitting this morning kind of thinking, but yes, George, we, we know that, we, we, we understand that. But the more and more I thought about this, the more and more I realized how easy is it for, for any of us to fall back into that temptation, to fall back into kind of that rut going, if only I do this, I'll get a little bit more. If only I do this, I can get a little bit more. And, and so when I started thinking about that, it's like going, even I think all of us have fallen into that temptation some time or another in our lives. Where we're kind of going, I've just got to do this to get a little bit more. And realizing we're storing up the, these, tre these storehouses, these treasures here on earth. Which one day will just rot away, fall away to nothing. And so what are the storehouses that we should be storing up? What are the storehouses that we should kind of be building into, plowing into, and getting up in the morning going, I need to build up that storehouse. Well, to be totally honest, I think all of the storehouses are going to look slightly different for all of us. All of the storehouses are going to look slightly different, but they're all going to have one common thing, I believe, overriding everything. And that is, have we shared the gospel? And so when we think about it, the last, the last command that, that Christ gave us just before he left was to go into all nations and sharing the gospel. Go into all nations, teaching them to obey everything that, that Christ had taught his disciples to obey and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see, the gospel wasn't just something that Christ thought would be this amazing story one day for us. As we've said before, the gospel is transformative. And, and that is a treasure that we can pass on to others. It's a treasure that will never, ever, ever rot away. Because it's a treasure that leads us to this, this relationship with God the Father. And that's the kind of treasure we should be passing on to those around us. And so I want to kind of challenge us, all of us this morning, is who's one person you have shared the gospel with this last week? 
Who is one person that you've kind of been able to have the opportunity, whether it's, and I know, yes, we're in lockdown and all that kind of stuff, but we've obviously got the use of technology, we've got the use of WhatsApp and all that kind of stuff and social media, who is, or even phone calls, who is one person you've been able just to, to share Christ's love with and just start sharing and start having that gospel conversation with those around you? And so when we look at it, Christ doesn't give us any formula to how we, we should be doing this. He just says, go, go into all nations. And so often we kind of t try and take it and try and make a formula out of it. But what I believe what he's saying is just go, just do it. Just get out there and make a difference in the world. Start, start building up these treasures that are eternal. And so let's start looking at that. How are we building up treasures that are eternal instead of treasures that are temporary? Instead of treasures that while they may help us, help us in inverted commas here on earth, while they may make us feel good, while they may uplift our sort of status, actually in the grand scheme of things, they mean absolutely nothing. And so that's the challenge I want to leave with you today. And so, yes, thank you so much for joining us. Hope that you have an awesome day. We look for Barry's going to be sharing again with us tomorrow. Look forward to seeing you then. Have a blessed day, everybody. And don't and remember, sorry, don't forget, let's share the gospel. Let's start building storehouses that are eternal.